don't know about you, but I adore the lead up to a new console generation. What does that sexy new tech do? When will it release? What will it look like? And my personal favourite, what colour will it be? Hello and welcome to PlayStation Grenade. Over the past few months, Sony has begun to outline their intentions for the PlayStation 5, which, by the way, hasn't actually been confirmed as the PlayStation 5 yet. But come on, it has to be, right? Anyway, let's break down what we know about the PS5. Here's 15 things officially confirmed for the PlayStation 5. Let's start with reassurances to PS4 gamers. Sony's PS4 love is staying. During a Sony investors meeting earlier this year, the support for PS4 was outlined, stating they do not expect a quick migration from PS4 moving to the new PS5 tech. From my own dealings with PS Plus, I know that there remains a massive PS3 install base who will likely pick up a cheaper PS4 when the PS5 arrives. So don't feel rushed to get this new tech. If you want specifics, 2023 looks to be the time Sony expects the PS5 to outshine the PS4. Not in terms of sales, but in terms of the amount of people who own a PS5 being high enough to begin to shift focus completely. But to be clear, the PS4 ain't going nowhere. In fact, that leads to my next point. Backwards compatibility and cross-generation gaming. A quick history lesson if I may, the original PS2 had backwards compatibility with the PS1, but it was touch and go which games would actually work on it. This feature was eventually taken out of future PS2s. The feature returned in the OG PS3, but once again taken out after launch, and then the PS4 rolled out, which didn't have backwards compatibility at all. This is likely due to the PS3 architecture being so incredibly difficult to work with, it could also be due to to manufacturing costs, or it could be due to Sony using Nintendo's business model to force consumers to buy old games multiple times. Whatever the reason, Microsoft made sure the Xbox One could play all 360 games, which became pivotal in the console war. So now on PS5, Sony have confirmed all PS4 games will be playable on the PS5. There's a patent in place if you want to see it for yourself, it basically tricks the PS5 into thinking it's a PS4 and the game runs perfectly. If you're grabbing a PlayStation 5 but don't have enough room to keep your old PS4, be comfortable in the thought that all your games are playable in the next generation. And yes, that includes downloadable games and DLCs. Oh and if you're wondering, the PS4 and PS5 will have cross save on all games. Another thing which I'm personally unbelievably happy about is that physical discs are confirmed. This isn't a big deal to many people, but I prefer to physically own my games. What about you? Depending on your location or budget etc, you may not have a stable internet connection to rely on to download games, and in some countries, downloading is bloody expensive too. And fundamentally, this ensures that the second hand market survives into the next generation. It's okay if you're not interested in that, but there are so many people who need to sell games to play games, and that infrastructure is important. I recently picked up Spider-Man digitally, and now I want to lend it to my brother, but I can't. It may be a small thing, but it does impact how we play games. Okay, so we've sorted out the legacy aspect. Now let's look into the future. Let's start with the biggest technological advances in the coming generation, ray tracing. This may seem like a buzzword for the future of gaming, and you're right, it is, but it's also going to be something to be expected in all games in future years. But what the heck is it? Surprisingly, it's, it's pretty simple. The industry is attempting to move away from, say, the character artist manually inputting values in, in areas of light and dark. Something as simple as walking under a dark bridge or tunnel would have required additional information to know how to act when the daylight isn't present. This is known as computer approximation and could lead to issues like black problems, blurred edges, artifacting, that kind of thing. But now, this is the future. Just like in the real world, when light hits an object, it reflects or refracts the light. This is what makes the real world look real. You've already seen this hundreds of times, mainly in high budget Hollywood films like the Marvel movies. Now the costs are reducing, video games will prosper from this technology. It will take time to be perfected and optimised, but without a doubt, this is the next generation's calling card. Ray Tracing. Let's talk about additional power. 
The next step forward in home console gaming, and the PS5 in particular, will be the use of an SSD, a solid state drive. Instantly this will improve load times, and depending on how it's implemented, this will make the console quieter. The PS4 Pro is like a jet engine sometimes, so yeah, a quieter machine will be damn handy. But the main point is load times. Did you see the leaked footage from the investor call? Using Marvel Spider-Man, the next generation we call the PS5, took on the PS4 Pro and loaded the scene in 0.83 seconds. Less than a second. Whereas the current most powerful PlayStation on the market, the PS4 Pro, took 8.1 seconds. Wow. On average, the PS5 is said to be 19 times faster than a PS4, all thanks to that solid state flash memory. Another way to look at this is through GTA 5. The game takes forever to load up, doesn't it? Just takes forever. Imagine that, 19 times faster. This is a big deal. Here's something to consider too. Now in 2019, SSDs are still a pricey bit of kit that will fall in price before the PS5 releases, but there are two ways this tech can impact the next generation. Either the cost of the console will be higher, and we'll get to that soon, or Sony will sell hardware at a loss. That may sound like poor management, but this is in fact the norm in tech companies. Getting the hardware into your home is the real battle, because selling software is what they want to do. So expect both Sony and Microsoft to sell at a loss in the next generation, but still expect the consoles to be a little pricey when first released. If we are lucky, there'll be a pricing war as each company attempts to undercut the other, and the only winner in those scenarios is us, the consumers. As an extension to this point, Sony have patented new technology recently which will work hand in hand with that SSD, titled System and Method for Dynamically Loading Game Software for Smooth Gameplay. Okay, so that makes zero sense, so let's break it down instead. Have you noticed in-game, areas of the environment pop in as you walk closer? Sometimes it's out of nowhere, that's why we call it popping, and sometimes it's a low quality asset being replaced with something more substantial. Open world games usually suffer from this the most. Sony plans to analyze where the player is in relation to the world and begin to preload the next piece of content that player looks like they're going towards. Or in an open world game, it would preload the area your mission will like send you to. If you don't go there, the data will be simply disregarded or adapted. This to me looks like a monumental step forward towards the removal of loading screens in video games completely. Remember Skyrim when you're about 30-40 hours in? The load screen could last 11 minutes on the PS3. <laughs> to ground that information, many games hide load screens. If you've ever seen an elevator in a game, that's a load screen, forcing you to wait until everything is ready for you. My favourite is from The Last of Us, which uses high ledges or high walls as loading buffers. Sneaky and clever, but maybe we won't see as many moments like this when the PS5 rolls out in 2020. Another step forward in immersion and overall gaming quality is impossible for me to show you because it's a new audio engine. The closest tech to this at the moment is probably Dolby Atmos or Sony's 360 Reality Audio, but I think I can explain this. I'm sure you've seen the multiple speakers in cinemas or you've visited someone who has 7.1 surround sound set up in their home. Granted, most of this comes down to the quality of your headset or audio device, but the main plan here is to use the fundamentals found in ray tracing. Do you remember those lines that bounce around earlier? Yeah, that's the thing. They're going to do the exact same thing with audio. So audio flies towards an object, which either dampens or echoes the sound back. It's really that simple. Once again, making the game feel a little more realistic. We'll have to see how it goes because in 2019, I still haven't played a game where they can successfully implement vertical audio. If you play Fortnite and you hear footsteps, are you able to tell if they're above you or below you? Because I can't, still. Maybe, just maybe, Sony 360 Reality Audio will find the key to the audio restraints in the current generation. And wait, there's more. Going back to visuals, supposedly the PS5 is capable of 8K output. Yeah. I'm a bit of a Sony fanboy, but as I'm independent, I can be honest where other PlayStation channels sadly cannot. 8K on PS5? Hmm, I question this as I believe this is trying to make the product appear future-proofed when the likelihood of a game using this feature are slim to none in my eyes. Yes, it's true that the framework will be there, but don't get your hopes up too much. I'm not even certain we'll get solid frame rates at 4K, half that resolution in the next generation. I don't need much, I personally would love 1080p at 120 frames a second for competitive gaming on a bedroom TV or desktop monitor and 60 frames per second at 4K for cinematic gaming in your living room. And again, let's add context to all these buzzwords. Currently, an 8K monitor will cost about six times the expected price of a PS5. 
<laughs> 8K may be here, but only for the rich and the reckless at the moment. Earlier we mentioned digital downloads and the future of internet connections for streaming and gaming on the go. Have you seen Google's attempt to break into this market, the Google Stadia, where everything is online? At the moment, game streaming isn't up to the standard to make us all sell our consoles and throw our PCs in the garbage, but just in case something unprecedented happens, Sony and Microsoft have joined forces. Sony has agreed to use Microsoft's Azure cloud service for streaming content to gamers. This is most likely to combat Stadia, showing they are both invested in streaming games and more importantly are willing to work across different platforms. Maybe in about 10 years streaming will be a commonplace thing, but in 2020? No, I don't think so. Not just yet. Looking into this from the outside, Google and Microsoft seem to have a much stronger position in server-side gaming streaming, so expect Sony to aggressively cut that gap over the next few years. So, um, psst, keep an eye on PlayStation now. I've said too much. What's your opinion of VR gaming? I have PSVR, PlayStation Virtual Reality, and I love it, but the power of the current system isn't ideal, and those cables make gaming a nightmare to set up. Oculus on the other hand and other manufacturers have implemented wireless versions but embedded the tech elsewhere, which makes this point very interesting. PSVR tech is already built into the PS5. Sony have recently asked for feedback about the PSVR, which makes virtual reality a continued focus for Sony and the PlayStation of the next generation. If you've come to this video as a Sony pony or an X-Bot or a PC master race <laughs> trying to see what is your best options for the future, one point remains the real difference here. The next console war is all about first party titles. Microsoft have realized this and began to purchase many studios. So in about four to seven years, that could really come to fruition. But currently the PS4 has the far stronger first party titles and sales suggest that that's going to be the same thing for the PS5. So what do you reckon? Where do you like to play? Why do you play where you play? And now the big question, when will the PS5 release? Everything is pointing towards a 2020 release, but some people think we're going to get it this year. I'm not too sure about that. The PS4 and PS3 released in November. The PS2 released out of Japan in October and November. And the PS1 is a little less easy to track due to multiple release dates, but let's call it September. So this all suggests that November is the perfect month to launch, but I'm hoping for something a little sooner. In 2017, Nintendo broke the rules of releasing around Christmas and gave us a Switch in March. What do you think? When do you think we'll see the PS5? If it's even called that. And finally, price. Price is key to getting these in your home. I remember many of my friends purchasing the Xbox 360 because its price point suited them better. Do you remember the PS3 release? It was a little embarrassing as a PlayStation gamer. Sony wanted $600 for the PS3, which was ridiculous because the average consumer couldn't afford that. This led to the Xbox winning the early days of that console war, although in the end, PlayStation won that war too. The PS4 released at $400, which was about $300 50 quid here in the UK and was much more affordable. So here's the thing, those SSDs in the PS5 are mighty expensive and if the controller doesn't change then they aren't cheap either. So what will be the PS5 price point? Have a guess below, I'll buy a PS5 for the first person to get the answer right below. Only comments in the first week though, alright? <laughs> I'm not doing this until the day it releases. So there we have it, what do you think about the future of PlayStation? I'd love to know your thoughts. Go crazy, let's start a debate below. I'm Adam from PlayStation Grenade, hopefully this has been interesting and informative, or just a waste of your time. <laughs> I'll see you next time.